Hello guys, this is Linus Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. My favorite five knots in ham radio in today's video. Stay tuned. During my outdoorsy activities, I've noticed that I'm using most of the time the same five knots. Today, I'm going to present my favorite five knots for ham radio in no particular order. All of them are important and every one of them could be number one or number five. Let's start with the bowling knot. Number one, bowling. Here's the bowling knot. Actually, it's a fixed loop. When made properly, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays the knot in place. The knot keeps it in place and it's actually a fixed loop. Very convenient to fix the guying rope collar and you know very very useful uh, when you need to erect your mast and keep it straight and firm imagine uh, we need to install another guying rope collar on our mast and for that we're gonna need another another three guying ropes so it's best of all uh, to use the bowling knot to make an highlight for the better demonstration i just fix it here it's important first to make a right loop it's kind of a working loop so you make a loop with the working end we call this working end moving end so we go from the under the loop we enter the loop from beneath right this is the fixed uh, rope call it a tree so then we go around the tree from from the lower side from the under and then we come back into the loop So, and here we have the shape of the bowling knot and we tighten it up and voila, the bowling knot is made. All right, so when you've got the guying ropes collar equipped with the bowling knot and with the eyelets in place, so the second task you need to uh, fix the ropes or these lines to the ground and make them taut in order to have the mast standing firmly and nicely to do this you need a taut line hitch number two taut line hitch with a taut line hitch you can easily regulate the line so if you move the knot down it it, it goes down and then you can release the whole line if you go up you can make it taut very very well and it doesn't doesn't move it doesn't go you know on itself it just stays where it is and you know fixed and firm all the time how do you make the taut line hitch so imagine this is our working end and this end goes straight, straight to the pole so first we go from the under the main rope with the working end of it and then we do two turns around around the left part of the loop One turn, one turn, and one more turn. And then we need to fix everything in, in one knot. So what I do, I go around like this. And I make a simple, a simple knot around this. 
and then you tighten it up and that's it the taut line hitch is made so it doesn't go anywhere unless unless you slide it so it doesn't go anywhere unless you release it and it doesn't go anywhere again in some other tutorials you may see the ending of, of uh, taut line hitch is different uh, some experts suggest to make the final so to say uh, not not on this part but to go here but my experience show that when you make the final uh, the final knot here to fix the whole knot in place uh, it still uh, slides on itself if you apply a lot of tension and when you fix a mast it could be a lot of tension it could be movements from the wind like that so you see another version which is also officially <laughs> so to say approved uh, I, I i make it this way because when you make the final loop like this on in, in this part of the of the of, of the whole loop so uh, it uh, makes the friction somehow better and the whole knot locks on itself locks into the major into the major rope part of the rope and it stays doesn't go anywhere so uh, this version my favorite one sometimes i find myself in situation when i don't have my guying ropes collar with me or it could be lost it could be broken whatever and then i only have the rope and i need to fix this rope somehow reliably to the mast in order to do the same role as the guying rope collar does so what do we do then i use the cow hitch cow hitch number three with the working short end we go above the fixed end we make a loop around the tube and then come from the back side into the loop again and that's it and it's done so it's kind of a we make the mast inside the loop i like it very much because uh, it makes more firm uh, grip onto the mast and when finding the best direction for the counter rope you can move it around you can turn the mast in it you know that's very fine so uh, just one thing in order uh, if, if we leave it like this and we apply tension it will slip off uh, that's that's uh, well that's the peculiarity of the cow hitch so to prevent this i make a very easy very easy simple knot on top of this and that's it it's it it's fixed it, it doesn't go anywhere and what is most important having uh, this this type of uh, knot to fix the cow hitch uh, it's very easily and rapidly undeployable so to say you can release it uh, very very quickly you just need to make like this and that's it and you released it cow hitch number three absolutely fantastic knot it could be that uh, i need sometimes uh, to have some shelter to defend myself from the wind or from the rain whatever for that the best way to do is to have a thicker rope like this this is six millimeter rope to create a ridge line which will be a carrier for my shelter one end of the rope of my ridge line is fixed reliably to the one tree it's done exactly the same way as I was doing uh, with the cow hitch on the mast just bigger the same loop for the quick release and to fix and make the rope taut I will need the my favorite knot number four trucker's hitch all right first of all we need to make a working loop so this is my left hand and so clockwise we turn it clockwise we have a loop 
now we put this loop onto this end towards towards the tree and take a piece of rope through this loop and form another loop so this is our working loop this this is working loop very important to make it then let's adjust the our desirable height of our of our ridge line oops so okay could be could be this height i think it's okay so now as we have this loop the working loop we take the end of our working end of the rope and put through this loop and this is gonna be our main so to say leverage instrument to to make the the ridge line taut so we take it put it through through the hole and we pull it the more we pull it the more tense it becomes and okay i can see that it's becoming more and more taut which is very good so okay i think it's it's enough i think it's enough now now we have, we have to fix uh, the part where the loop you know where the where the rope enters the working loop uh, we need to fix it with our thumb and index finger to prevent it from sliding off then the last the last so to say move we have to make another loop with our one hand it takes a little bit of practicing we put this loop down and then we take from inside the rest of the rope so we we pull it slightly and then we just fix it like this and this is the so to say ending knot it prevents the rope from sliding off the working loop and it now stands very firmly you know it doesn't move doesn't go anywhere very good and this is at the same time it's a quick release i like trucker's hitch also because of it is very easy to release when not needed so you just pull the end of the rope and that's it the knot disappears so even this working loop disappeared I can either make adjustments if I wish to or I can you know disassemble the whole construction so now I want to make some adjustments make it even more taut all right and repeat it again so we make a small extra loop and we take the end of the rope through this loop and we make a fixing final fixing knot so okay so you see it's quickly i repeated it again very very quickly so that's the trucker's hitch works very well when you need to make the ridge line taut knot number five prusik knot the prusik knot is needed today in order to be able to fix the tarp onto this ridge line to make a prusik knot you need to have a loop made of a piece of rope i'm not going to go into details on how to make a loop so you you need to use a fisherman's knot if you're really interested in that you will find on how to make the fisherman's knot maybe you know already so but uh, speaking shortly to make a fisherman's knot you make first one simple or so-called pretzel a pretzel knot on on one part of the rope on one end of the rope then you make another pretzel knot on the other part of the rope and then you just make them come together and they 
lock into each other and this is you know very reliable fisherman's knot making very reliable loop so in order to make a prusik knot we need this loop to wrap around this ridge line so in a special way to do that you just put the loop onto the ridge line and you let the uh, the the far end of the loop go into the middle of the loop into the center of the loop three times so you do it once you do it twice and you do it third time and then you make it good you make it taut and that's it so now the whole idea of the prusik loop uh, of the prusik knot is that it slides if you you know moves it with your hand on the on the ridge line but it stays in place if you move it any direction like that it locks it locks into the rope and it, do, it doesn't go anywhere or if you move to that side you won't be able to pull it back you know so that's an ingenious uh, creation of Austrian mountaineer Karl Prusik so and that's why this knot is called Prusik knot under the name of this famous Austrian mountain climber so and that's why uh, I think the right pronunciation of this knot is Prusik because uh, Karl Prusik was Austrian with the with the Czech roots probably uh, Austria is a German speaking country with a very multicultural history and there is a lot of uh, Czech names in uh, in their so to say culture in their among their inhabitants so if it's a Czech name so it surely would be Prusik or even Prusik so but in German spelling it it's Prusik uh, most of English speakers you probably say Prusik which is you know when we speak about the knot it's okay it's known by Prusik or Prusik I've read somewhere that in the US Army uh, the experts the specialists are taught to say Prusik so <laughs> I stick to this version so uh, in order to install our turp line we need two Prusik knots. The turp is ready, the two Prusik uh, knots are ready. So how do we fix the Prusik knots to the tarp? I, I think it, you, you can do it any way you wish. The most quick is just to prepare two toggles from the branches of the trees in the forest and to put each toggle into each, so to say, end and it is it, gonna fix the prusik loop into the tarps into the tarp so to say grommets it's not grommets it's kind of a velcro straps in my case but it's it, it, it's okay so now we can see the prusik uh, prusik knot in action uh, if i pull <laughs> That's an action. The knot has not even moved. So, now we can see the Prusik knot in action. Uh, I start pulling slowly the knot and you see it does not come, come back. So it stays here. I can do the same with the other side. All right. Voila, it stays here. This is a toggle fixing the Prusik knot onto the tarps. Velcro strap is the same, so the, all we need to do now is just to pull the tarp back and make, you know, and make the angle, the right angle for our shelter. It's a quick shelter. The shelter is ready. 
shelter is ready, mast is ready. I now have some time to put up my favorite antenna, take my favorite radar Elecraft KX2 and spend some hour or two making contacts. So that's it for today. Knots are essential, are crucial and indispensable for to, to ham radio activity outdoorsy. These were my favorite five knots. There is many more knots. There are hundreds of knots. I'm very interested in your experience. What kind of knots are you using in, in your field activities? So maybe you have uh, some comments on uh, the knots I'm using. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So please leave your message in the comment section and I'll be very, very glad to share uh, my experience and to learn your experience. That's it for today, guys. Peace and victory for Ukraine. See you in my next videos. Cheerio, tara for now. This is Linus, LY2 Hotel, 73. Okay, Belgian station, one five JT stroke portable, operating from Belgium Park. Great, my mono twin antenna makes very well on this 10 meter mast. There's a separate video, by the way, on the Mono Mini 20 antenna and fed half-wave mono band 20 meter.